Hey everybody and welcome back to Whitetail Woods 365. I'm out at the farm today and I realize it's been a while since I put out a video. So uh, I want to cover off on a few things today. The first thing I want to do is introduce you to uh, what we're calling the new cameraman. This is a Phantom 3 drone. Uh, it comes with a 2.7K camera. Uh, this is the advanced model and we're looking to put this into our arsenal this year and we're going to be using that uh, to try to bring you some more interesting content here in the off season and uh, and what that should do is provide us some aerial views into uh, the real-time locations where we're doing our work you know Google Maps are great but sometimes uh, the images are a little bit older than uh, than what you're currently doing so I hope that that brings a little bit of excitement to these episodes and today what we're going to do with the drone is we're going to go out and look at some of the new brassica plots that we're going to be putting in. So follow me, we're going to head out there and uh, we'll get up in the air with the Phantom 3 drone and show you what we're working on. So we're on top of uh, what we call the pasture hill and this is a spot where we've been working all year. You've seen us in here doing uh, the new Cabela's Clover food plot and we kind of talked about one of the reasons that we were doing that is to try to build up the soil here. Now we have two problems on top of the hill is uh, one, the soil tends to be a little bit sandier and two, with it being on top of the hill, it tends to be a little bit drier. The moisture content isn't as good as we'd like it for something like a brassica, which really, in, in my experience, it takes a lot of water, a lot of good rainfall, and a lot of good soil moisture content to get, uh, to get the big plants that you see advertised, um, for example, on a bag of Big and Beastie. You know, you want the, the giant bulbs, um, and, and we just haven't been seeing that. Over the last two years up here, although we've been liming and fertilizing uh, the way that we should according to the soil test, it's just not quite working. And so what we're going to try to do with this clover is build up the soil. Now you can see from the aerial footage that these two plots aren't very far apart from one another. So it's not like we're uh, going to be targeting a different deer herd. And, um, and really, you know, this is probably 50 yards away from one another at the most. And so our goal is really just to, uh, to match up the type of crop with the type of soil that best suits them. So on the bottom of the hill, we tend to have a little bit loamier soil and it has higher moisture content. And so that's gonna help those brassica plants really grow big and strong and, uh, and provide a lot of tonnage into the late season, hopefully right up into about March for the deer to, uh, to dig up and eat and get some energy. Now this is just the first plot that we're changing up this year. We've, um, with some of the uh, CRP land that we're in, some of the programs have changed a little bit. And so that's given us an opportunity to do some different things there too. So uh, I have two other plots that I want to show you guys today and we'll kind of go through uh, the design and, and why we set them up this way. Um, part of it is, uh, you know, sometimes you find yourself where you're kind of forced to do a certain thing and you have to make the best of it. Um, in this case, you know, we had two plots where for different reasons we've had to adjust what we've, we'd like to do there. And uh, actually I'm really excited about it. So let's go along and let's check out both of those other plots and I'll show you what we're doing there. This is plot number two, and this looks a lot different uh, from most of the brassica plots that we've done in the past. You know, most of ours are, um, are just more like a rectangle. But uh, what you're going to see this year with these, these three plots that I'm showing you is they all kind of have one thing in common. And they're, they're long, and they all have kind of bends in the road. And uh, it's kind of doing that for two reasons. Number one, you know, based on where the, the deer decide to come across these uh, the trail crossings, I'm going to be able to put my tree stand anywhere along this edge and that's going to give me an opportunity to adjust as they adjust their patterns and then also adjust based on the wind. And so by having these longer, narrower food plots, my goal is just that I'm going to be able to shoot the entire plot from anywhere along these fence lines. Now uh, you'll probably see it a lot better from the air here, but the, the, the turn here that we have is actually allowing us to probably get in uh, two, maybe three different family groups if we can attract them. 
Now, uh, over to my right, there is a CRP field that we uh, just recently uh, replanted. And so it's uh, not as tall as it's going to be, but this will provide a lot of great bedding. And then down here we have some pines that we probably planted, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And in between them, it's grown up with tall grass. And this has become a, a bedding area um, uh, for some of the bucks, and you'll see some rubs in there too. And so what I'm hoping to do is hoping to make these, uh, these deer feel comfortable coming out into this narrow pass and, and feeding kind of along the edge as they go uh, either to other bedding areas um, in the fall, you know, to check does, or as they're headed to the bean fields um, that they're eating on now, and then they'll switch back to in the, in the later season. So uh, how did we get to the point where on this particular uh, field we decided to do this? Well, I mentioned this is a, a new CRP field and some of the rules have changed. And uh, so we can have a certain percentage in an annual food plot. It can't be a perennial. So we, uh, we took out our perennial food plot and, uh, and put back in some more um, native grasses. And, uh, and so that kind of you know, gave us this opportunity. It, it seemed like it was going to be a problem, but it actually turned out to be an opportunity to make this really cool plot. And uh, so today I was out mowing and I got this one just kind of pre-mowed. And, um, and we'll talk about this more when we get into the, the planting episodes. But, uh, you know, I've mentioned before, I don't, I don't particularly care to use the herbicides. Um, I will if I have to, but I, I prefer not to. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to mow this. And uh, I know that the sun is going gonna, is gonna to dry this out. And then when I come back in with the disc in a couple of weeks, this is going to till under. And, um, and then I'll be able to plant on top of it. So really excited about, about this. And I, I hope from the aerial footage you're able to see some of these trails where they're coming through. Um, but we all know that deer shift their patterns. And, uh, and I really like this because I'm gonna be able to shift with them, right? And I've got a, a good vantage on, on bedding. There's a huge ag field uh, to the north here. And I'm gonna be able to see it all. So this is plot number two. I'm very excited about it and I want to get over to plot three because I almost think that this is my favorite. Um, I was really bummed out that we had to do what we had um, ended up doing here, but actually I'm the most excited about this plot out of um, all three of these. So let's head over there and we'll kind of wrap up the episode talking about uh, how that plot came to be and what the overall strategy is going to be later on this fall. things up for today this is plot number three that I wanted to talk to you about and just on a quick side note you know stress the importance of scouting continuously throughout the season uh, just over to my right here we have a massive silver maple that came down in a windstorm and it's right in the middle of, uh, of my plot and so now I need to make the decision on uh, am I gonna move it or am I gonna try to use that as a, a ground blind later on in the season so something to think about but uh, overall on this plot I did about the same size as I did on plot number two, where this is probably, um, with our brush hog, it's probably four or five passes. So it's only, I don't know, eight yards, maybe across. It's not very uh, wide, but it's long. And what's really cool about this one is it wraps around this group of trees and then it tucks all the way back up to the woods. Now, one of the bucks that was on our hit list last year, Picket Fence, he was coming through this area and actually, um, I have some footage from last fall from the tree line up there watching a lot of deer down here um, during the breeding season in November. So this is probably something that we've just been missing. We've probably missed this opportunity in the past, but what happened is um, we were doing some, uh, some, some cutting, some trimming on some trees, and we actually took them out into the field, and um, we had piles of the branches that we weren't going to use for uh, our firewood. And so those piles have been there, and um, just with the way that the weather has worked out and timing, we just didn't quite get there to clear that out. And so I was like, you know, well, what are we gonna do? Well, it turned into an outstanding opportunity for us to take advantage of the topography. So again, it's probably just something that we've been missing, but you can see here from the drone footage 
that uh, the way this wraps around, and I don't know if you can quite get a feel for the, the drop in elevation, but from where I'm at to the top of the hill is probably 50 feet in elevation change. So it's, it's um, not a steep hill, but it is uh, quite a bit of a difference. And again, just like the last food plot that we were talking about, when we talk about deer family groups, you know, they don't necessarily like socializing with one another sometimes. And so this gives them an opportunity to be down here uh, or up closer towards the woods. And again, the key part here is there's a lot of great trees where I can get in a tree stand. And so based on wind direction or travel habits as they change throughout the year, I'm gonna be able to move that tree stand. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out a few of these trees um, which is something I intended on doing this weekend and now you know this kind of changes things with this tree down but I'm gonna pick out a few trees where I'd like to be able to get a tree stand in do some light trimming to just kind of get it prepared that way the deer are used to seeing it that way and then based on what's happening as we get closer to the time where I'll be hunting this I'm gonna pick out that final one or two locations on here and try to capitalize on this new change to our food plots so uh, just to, to say in conclusion is um, you know, look look forward to those uh, those episodes here in probably two weeks where we come in, we'll revisit these plots, and we're going to show you how to plant the brassica plots. Um, but also, you know, just because something seems like maybe uh, it's not the way that you want it, it can be a blessing in disguise. So this is just another great example of how uh, we've been forced to do something. And I'll bet this fall we're going to bring you some footage, and we're going to have some uh, close encounters, if not with some big bucks. I know we'll have bucks on film. So look forward to that. I look forward to, uh, to visiting that topic with you guys in a couple of weeks. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna get back to the, the last few tasks I have. But until next time, get out in the woods and enjoy nature.